Hello and welcome to the Gut Show. Through the Gut Show, I want to help listeners to get a better grasp of the crypto world by getting into conversation with some of the leading voices in the crypto space. And in this episode, I am going to get into conversation with Kinjal Shah. Here's a little about Kinjal. Kinjal is a senior associate at Blockchain Capital, a venture capital firm focused on crypto asset and blockchain investing. Before getting into crypto rabbit holes, she spent time at Fidelity Investments. Kinjal is the most positive crypto advocate. She always brings an amazing perspective that is so needed in the crypto ecosystem. I'm delighted to have her on the Gut Show and can't wait to get into conversation with her. Let's begin. Uh, hello, Kinjal. Welcome to the Gut Show. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Yep, I'm, I'm doing great. And uh, to begin with, uh, what made you enter uh, enter the crypto world after spending time in uh, in TradeFi, and also uh, how was your first day in crypto? Yeah, so I was working at Fidelity, which is a traditional financial services company, and I got introduced to Bitcoin and blockchain, and decided, you know, after spending some time, that I really liked the um energy the curiosity I felt like the technology was going to change you know financial services but also many other industries so i decided to do it full time and, and leave um fidelity at that time and join blockchain capital and you know this was back in 2018 so the market was very busy we were just um you know we had just come down from the bull market so my first day in crypto um, was was a little bit crazy when it when it went to blockchain capital, but I spent you know six months at Fidelity, kind of learning from the inside, which was which was great. Uh, great to know your uh, great to know that. Uh, do you think uh, TradeFi and uh, crypto uh, compete with each other, or uh, how both of these worlds can uh, work together for a better future? Yeah, so I think they they compete to a certain extent. Um, you know, we don't we don't necessarily know what the next 20, 30 years is going to look like, but we do know that a lot of traditional finance is about um, intermediaries and manual processes. Um, and I think that makes it difficult to strip out the cost, right? A lot of financial services is expensive and complicated and crypto um, finance is hopefully going to be a little bit simpler and and more open and accessible over time i think fintech and and you know DeFi or crypto is going to be the same thing um i think everyone is going to start using infrastructure within crypto to power their products and services so i think we're headed there but right now they're still a little bit competitive got it right um okay how crypto education can be better and uh, how can we onboard million uh, users? And I would on this. Yeah, so, you know, I think crypto is, is still a little bit, um, it's, a, it's still a very complicated topic and doesn't have, I think, the right um, branding and storytelling that it needs to kind of make, you know, make its way into the masses. So, you know, I think when you come into crypto, you'll quickly realize that everything is moving very fast. Um, there's a lot of resources out there, but it's, it's difficult to know, you know, what is the first step? What is the second step? So I think we're going to start to see a few different ways to learn more about crypto. So first is for, for developers. Um, there's been a lot of work done with, you know, hackathons, with meetups, um, I think we're going to see more devoted resources to uh, become an engineer that's focused on, you know, blockchain. So whether that's Solidity or something else, there's going to be boot camps um, and hopefully a little bit more of an onboarding process that way. For everyday user, I think it really comes down to, you know, doing something that just allows users to, to get onboarded really easily. So I think NFTs are a great example of this where it's easy it's fun people understand it and so i think trying to get an nft as a first step is a great way and then over time people just have to start using products um, and i think that's the best way to learn so 
I think we just need a lot more education from the companies themselves and um, a little bit more of like a, a easier onboarding process so that it doesn't require, you know, knowing a lot before you get started. Um, but And we're slowly but surely getting there. And I think a lot of the brands that are coming out now like in the NFT space, in the DAO space, even in DeFi, I think they're trying to tell more of a um, consumer friendly story. So I think we're headed in that direction. Awesome. Uh, talking about NFTs, uh, of NFTs, and, and like by the way, like uh, good to know that uh, you are also a fan of uh, NFTs. So yeah. Yeah. So I, I think um, so. NFTs stand for non fungible tokens, and NFTs are are basically any um, information that is stored on a blockchain. So it's a file that's stored on a blockchain, um, and it can take many shapes so it could be a photo it could be a video it could be words it could be code um and the important aspect here to note is is the properties that it, it kind of is able to take on so it makes the internet um ownable i think i think that's a quote from jesse walden where you know anything you want on the internet you can now buy you can um have provable scarcity so you know how many of this item is exists and it's very clearly defined that there's you have you know you have property rights over this item um, and so that's something that we've never had before but at a very very simple definition an nft is, is simply a file that lives on a blockchain yeah amazing to know this now yeah another question on the same lines uh where here on nfts and uh how is it going to evolve yeah, so for me, I think the first step is was getting NFTs to in the hands of people. And I think we have a long way to go, um, you know, just purchasing your first NFT. Right now, there's a big market for um, rare NFTs or expensive NFTs. I think over time, it'll become more downstream. And then I think step two is, OK, now we have an NFT. So what? Right. What do we do? Um, so I think those, there's a dozen questions to be answered there of, if you have an NFT, does this mean you can go showcase it somewhere? Does it give you access to certain communities, certain products? Um, does it have royalties? So if you're an artist and you sell your NFT and then you, you know, it gets sold in the future, do you make um, secondary revenue based off of that? There's a lot of different models that need to be explored, but I think step one is getting um, is, is step one is basically getting people to own an nft and then step two is uh, okay now what do we do with it what are the experiences that come from here got it uh now moving into uh now moving on to the passionate about investing in uh crypto pro uh what is a good crypto project uh what all things it should have to attract investors and and user like alike yeah, so I think there's a lot of um, questions that are similar to venture. So, you know, I think you, you need to kind of have a good understanding of the team and why they're um, potentially the right ones to go after the opportunity, have an understanding of the market, um, the technology and, and what the technology offers. But I think with crypto, the, the biggest question that I have when I'm talking to someone is, um, one, do they do they unlock something new, right? So are they trying to, um, you know, fundamentally offer a new product in the market? Do they have a new model? Um, what are they doing that you can't do in traditional, you know, finance or consumer or whatever the category is? So that's the first piece. And then I think the second piece is, can we take t problems from today or opportunities from traditional tech? and offer a crypto solution that that makes sense. So really trying to figure out, um, you know, what's new here and then also what problems do they actually solve. That's step one. And then I think the other question with crypto is really about timing. Um, and that's been super important. You know, I think the infrastructure we built over the past few years has made it much more possible for some of these use cases we see today that are starting to take off to take off. So I think assessing and evaluating timing is really important 
um, and also really hard to do. But you know, wanting to make sure that we're not um, either investing too early or too late in a particular idea. Thank you. Like this will be helping me. Like uh, help, uh, this will help me a lot personally. Uh, also, a follow up question on that. Uh, what do you see in a in a in a project from an investment perspective? Um, do you mean like what do we see for criteria or yeah, criteria. do you mind clarifying? Yeah. So I think the criteria it, it really does come down to some of those things I mentioned, and then I think you know when we're evaluating the team and the product um at, at this point you know a lot of times we're also thinking about traction um what do their metrics look like what is their go-to-market strategy um who are the competitors in the space is their approach differentiated for some reason you know i think crypto is interesting because it's all open source and so um your competitive moat it, it's not your it's not going to be your code right your code is open and anybody can can kind of fork it so it's really a question of your brand, your community, um, and then oftentimes like product differentiation as well. So trying to think through those um, is really what it comes down to when we're when we're deciding if we want to invest in a project or a team. Amazing. Uh, now to end with, uh, share a bit about uh, blockchain capital. Yeah. So blockchain capital, we are early stage venture firm based um, out of San Francisco. We have been around for eight or nine years and, you know, we're really generalists in this space. So we've made over a hundred investments to date. Um, we are investing out of our fifth fund right now, which is a $300 million fund backed by um, some L notable LPs like PayPal and Visa. Um, and yeah, we, we kind of invest across the entire spectrum. So whether that's infrastructure, um, or DeFi, NFTs, consumer, you know, anything that that's that's really kind of in our purview. Um, yeah. So if anybody is, is interested in chatting more, you know, you can always reach out to me and, and find me on Twitter and I'm happy to chat. Amazing. Like, uh, yes, thanks a lot for answering all the questions. Uh, yep. Yes. Thanks for uh, thanks for being on the gut show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yes.